Hello, it's Hannah here, and in this video we're looking at how you can use connection training to help solve your catching problems. Now there are so many reasons why horses might not want to be caught, from suffering separation anxiety at leaving their field companions, to um, feeling discomfort when being ridden, which they associate with being caught. So it's really important to explore the underlying reasons so you can help your horse. Now in this video you're going to meet Helen and her horse Charlie um, and how they overcome their long term catching problems and we don't know what triggered Charlie's. He arrived to Helen from the day that she bought him um, with this catching problem of just running circles in the around the field and showing this anxiety about being approached by people in the field although he was, seemed very happy in all of the situations. This could have just been one bad experience that he had um, which meant that he started to associate this anxiety with being caught in the field. We don't know, but the trick is to change those negative emotional associations to positive ones so that instead of feeling anxious and feeling like he wants to avoid it, that when he sees somebody in the field then it, it creates this feeling of uh, joy and pleasure and relaxation. And as you can see, it, the training worked really well and it benefited them. Not just, didn't just solve the catching problems, though it did that beautifully, um, but it also improved their whole relationship as well. Well, I got him when I was 14 and uh, straight away I would go, into, as soon as he arrived, I'd go into the field and he'd just be running round and round and round and it would take us forever to catch him. Um, and he could go out with the feed bucket and you'd put it down and he'd creep up and then he'd stick his nose in it and he'd sort of bring the head collar out and he'd be off. Or, and then he learned that if you went out with a feed bucket he went nowhere near you because um, you, you, he couldn't sneak out of the head collar and all that sort of thing. Every time we had to catch him, we'd go out with a bit of electric fencing and then he'd get corralled into a corner and then he'd stand quite happily to have his head collar on. Or we'd bring all the other ponies in to the yard where he'd stand on the yard and he'd be like, oh, I'm on the yard now, OK, I can have my head collar on. But it was just in the field. He didn't want to have his head collar on. He didn't want to be caught. Um, and that was the issue we had. And I. Uh, I'd always had a nosy at what Hannah was doing, which it was quite interesting. She was always doing weird things with her ponies. And um, and she'd sort of told me that what she was doing, uh, she could get Charlie to be able to come to call. And I was like, uh, I've tried everything. It's not going to happen. We've tried, Especially when she told me treats. I was like, yeah, Charlie's not interested in treats. He's never been interested. I could go out to the field with a carrot with nothing else and he would never be interested. Nevertheless, Helen was willing to give it a go. So we began with the complete training foundation lessons. So this is about teaching them how to be calm and polite um, around the treats, understanding the, the marker signal or the click, um, and, and as well as teaching him how to target. So that's touching, his, touching an object on cue with his nose. And we began all of this in the yard where he was comfortable to begin with to build up a really good, strong, positive emotional association with the training before taking it into the trickier area of catching him in the field. So as you might expect, when we took it back to the field, Charlie reverted to his old behaviour of walking away and trying to avoid, um, avoid us. And the key here uh, was that we didn't go back into any of the old stuff. So we didn't chase him, we didn't follow him. Helen just stood there presenting the target. And whenever he so much as looked at her, she would mark that with a click and then offer the food. Now, obviously, at the beginning, he was way too far away to actually come up and take the food. But um, it was really important just to show him that the game was the same, even though we were in the field, which is where he had felt much more anxiety. With time and repetition, Charlie started to get the confidence to come right up to Helen in the field. And that was the first time he'd done that in the years and years that she'd had him. But you can still see he's got quite a lot of conflict and tension. And it was really important here that he had the choice to be able to leave if he felt he had to. So it was completely his decision to come up. We weren't going to force him or chase him or make it unpleasant. And when they've got that choice, it builds their confidence. And it kind of, um, you know, when they truly know it's their decision, they can make that step to overcome that anxiety. Um, and so the choice is such an important part of the training, especially when you are overcoming um, this kind of anxiety. We also did a lot of um, walking away from him when he was really good. It was kind of um, just to make sure that we weren't putting him under pressure or going back into that old behaviour, but just giving him some space and inviting him to come with Helen and to continue playing the targeting, which you can see he really enjoys. And this was to help build up that relationship and change those associations of being with Helen in the field. And you can see he's much more confident, relaxed and uh, really enjoying their interactions, which is a 
brilliant first step. Even though Charlie wasn't into treats, when Hannah came round and showed me what Clicker was all about, it, I, I started to realise it was a lot more than treats and Charlie, I think probably quicker than I realised actually, was that it was far more than treats for him. It was an intriguing game and he was wondering what I wanted him to do and that moment when I could actually see him thinking about whether he wanted to come up to me or go to his friends and he, made, he actually made a conscious decision um, to walk towards me rather than go over to his friends. That was, that for me, after all these years of him just being like, see ya, it was an amazing moment just to have that from him. So Helen continued to work with Charlie um, and making all their interactions really positive. So this was both playing games in the field where he had his uh, previous negative associations and also with um, all of their sessions um, including riding and things as well, so that their relationship continued to strengthen. And as you can see, it completely changed and he did start to come to call and was really happy to be caught. So now, um, to get Charlie in from the field, I go out my back door and I start shouting. And then uh, by the time I've walked to the field gate, he meets me there and it's great. It saves me about 20 minutes every time. I dedicated those 20 minutes, which I would have been corralling him around for, to doing a little bit of clicker and um, our relationship's never been better and uh, I understand him better. I think he is a lot more tuned into what I'm doing and um, it's just so much, it's so much nicer. I didn't realise how much nicer it could be. I just thought it was fine and then, but now it's just, it's great. <laughs>